Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to regularly scheduled meeting of Sunderland Select Board, February 13th, 2023. Call to order at 6.33. First up is approved minutes of February 6th and 7th. I make a motion we approve the minutes for February 6th and February 7th. Seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded for approval of February 6th and 7th meeting minutes as presented. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3 0. Next up, budget presentation Sunderland Public Library. Sunderland Public Library, Catherine. budgets as requested, one reflecting level services and the second reflecting expanded services. Um, I'll start with the level services budget. Um, the first line um, was for the, um, the building operations and that was a no, no increase from previous fiscal year. Um, building is in great shape and um, costs have remained fairly steady so um, everything is okay in those regards. Um, the library expense line um, is what covers our materials as well as our um, CWMR's membership, which is the consortium that we are a part of. Um, I am requesting a 10% increase of $3,000 to that. Um, you know, the price of materials has remained steady and is projected to remain steady for FY24, but we have noticed a large increase in shipping and processing costs. Um, this mostly has to do with shipping delays as well as um, increased um, challenges of factory work where these books are made, processed, and shipped. Um, we're, you know, with the, we're seeing costs relating to shipping and other suppliers. It's about a $1,500 increase that's going to go forward. And then the other reason for that increase is that we're seeing an increase of usage in our digital collections, which is our e-books, electronic audio books, and streaming films. <coughs> Um, so we really, you know, the circulation is increasing. There's definitely a demand for it. We're seeing a lot more holds on items, longer hold times. So we really would like to increase these services that are being used and appreciated by our patrons. Um, average cost of an ebook is $65 as opposed to the average cost of a book, which is about $18, give or take. So um, it's a huge increase. Um, and then the streaming films are on a pay-per-use model, which is fantastic, but each play costs about two to four dollars. It depends on the, the service. So um, we've actually, you know, because of the increased demand, we've added a couple of new services too that we're happy to see being used. Um, and you know, we'd like to add more services too as those become available because our patrons love them. Um, for the library support staff budget, um, we are asking for a um, a 12.68% increase. Um, this has to do with a 4.1% um, cost of living increase for the um, for all staff, and that's to reflect the rising cost of living. Um, however, we recognize that the personnel committee will make their own recommendations for the cost of living, so we will go with that. This was just our best guess at what we thought was appropriate at this time. Um, but the big reason for the increase is that we are seeking um, 25 hours per week for the adult services position. Um, and this is um, the head of adult services position and it's a really important position to us. I know past years we've also tried to increase the hours for this position. Um, there's really three main reasons why this is important to us. Um, the main one is that the head of adult services serves as the de facto acting director during any library director absences. Um, it's really important to have, you know, just continuity for any organization when someone is out absent, either planned or unplanned, that we have someone who can step in very easily and, and take over these tasks. You really need a high level employee who's dedicated to the organization um, and skilled in administrative tasks that you can't ask of a, a circulation assistant. So um, it's really important that, you know, when this person needs to serve as an acting director, that they have enough hours available to do it. Um, previously, when this employee served as the acting director, um, and then we you know, did our best to keep them at 18 hours a week, but they definitely went over. I mean, there's no way you can be a library director of a full-time library 
um, at 18 hours a week. Um, so it's really essential for that reason. Um, the Head of Adult Services also provides a higher level of service to our patrons. Um, we're definitely seeing an increased need of patrons coming in with research questions as well as um, technology questions are a major one. Um, and we really need to have employees who are able to take time to sit down with patrons one-on-one -on -one and provide the assistance that they need. Um, we're seeing an average, you know, I'd say six or seven, um, refer you know, in-person reference questions per week, um, which is, you know, one or more every day. It doesn't seem like a huge amount, but for a small public library where we do have to take individual time to sit down with our patrons, um, that's definitely, you know, a large, <laughs> a large amount of our time that our employees are spending on it and making sure we have an employee who's working more hours um, serving patrons um, who is able to, to sit down with them and answer these questions so they don't have to come back, they don't have to make an appointment with the director um, would be really beneficial and, and used. Um, and then I think that the head of adult services position is just crucial to the function of our library and you know, hopefully we don't need to replace this position for a long time, but providing the position with suitable part-time hours and benefits, it really will help us retain the great staff member that we have in the position now, but also it will help us find qualified candidates um, in, you know, if the board um, ever needs to hire someone else. Um, for example, Hatfield Public Library, a much smaller library than us, they've had an assistant director position for over a decade now, um, for the same reasons as us, um, but they have had, in the past four years, they've had three different people in that position because that employee does not have suitable hours. They keep losing their wonderful qualified staff to positions that have benefits and better hours. So um, that anything we can do to make sure that this position, you know, is enough for people to be able to dedicate their time to it and make it a long-term goal will just really benefit um, the library and that benefits our patrons. Um, and then for the library director, we just, um, that's the other, the last budget line, we requested a 4.1% increase for the cost of living with that position as well. Um, for the expanded services budget, the only difference um, was that we um, requested um, an increase of 13.74% in the library building operating. The reason for that is if we were to expand services, we would love to add hours on Thursdays, have the library be open on Thursdays. Um, we've seen a lot of patrons requesting that <laughs> um, for the first off. They'd love to have more morning hours. Um, currently, Tuesdays and Wednesdays were open um, at 1 p.m. and we have um, on Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays, we open at 10 a.m. and those are our busiest times or those mornings when we see the most people coming in. Um, we're currently working on a new long range plan. I have a survey out um, to our citizens and that's the number one request is more hours, specifically Thursday hours. They also want Sunday hours, but we can't do that <laughs> as well. Um, and, um, you know, so that's just increase, you know, small increases to building supplies, um, the, our electricity and other, you know, those utilities are counted, um, you know, are paid for out of the town energy line. Um, but I also, um, one other thing that we were doing, um, pre-pandemic, we had a grant from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners to improve our services to children on the autism spectrum. And we started offering sensory friendly hours on Thursdays. Um, because the library was closed, it allowed us to have a more flexible environment where people might feel more comfortable coming in and um, you know not having to worry about their behaviors um, you know possibly disturbing someone else and they could feel understood and welcome to enjoy the library which is what we try to do all the time but it would also allow us you know that extra time on a day where we weren't traditionally open I'm assuming it would be slower at first but that would give us a chance to offer sensory friendly hours again which I think would be really beneficial to our, our wider community. Um, for the library expense, we are requesting a 30.72% increase for the expanded services. This would allow us to um, 
expand our collections. Um, as I spoke of earlier, our digital collections are seeing a boom and they're more expensive than traditional library materials, so we would love to spend more money on that. But um, the other thing, too, is that um, for many years, um, we have relied on the Friends of Sunderland Public Library and other private donors to make up the remainder of the materials expenditure requirement. Um, town funds support traditionally 66%. Uh, um, we're asking to increase that contribution to 12% to meet the materials expenditure requirement that would allow the Friends of the Library more flexibility in their fundraising to support programs which are you know, widely beloved, um, technology for the library and other things. Um, so just having the town contribute more to the state requirements for our materials would be a huge benefit to us. And you know, our taxpayers are also a lot of our donors, so it would you know, be beneficial for everyone to have that money go for the friends to be spent on the non-essentials that the town has paid for. Um, that was the two um, increases for the expanded services. Did you have any questions? Nathaniel, Crystal? Um, physical books. Yes. In the lifetime of a book, how long, how many, how often do you have to replace it? Like, or let's say a, a, a 10 year period, how, how often do you have to replace any given book? It totally depends. A children's book, twice. <laughs> um, an adult book, less. But we have, you know, we had a patron drop a book in a bathtub today, and another patron who left their book on a plane in Argentina, you know, so those kinds of things happen. But um, unfortunately, with the digital books, even though you think they wouldn't have a shelf life, the way the publishers put them out there is that they'll give you like two years with it, <laughs> and then you have to buy it again. Okay. Um, so yeah. Okay, so so it's it's the same revolving. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. they they specifically I mean, it, build if, it in that way. It's so frustrating. If it was an increased price, but then you just have it for the life of the library, I mean that would be great. That'd be a, a wonderful. And a lot deal. of times. There, there'll be like two options. You can buy it for a cheaper price with like the two year limit or like 24 uses limit, or you can spend double and have it forever. So I have to kind of weigh those choices when I'm mm -hmm. making purchases. Okay, thank you. So, so Catherine, um, concerning the, in the additional hours. Yes. Um, for the employee or being open? Huh? For the employee, the head of adult services position, or for being open on Thursdays? Yeah. Well, the the, the being open on Thursdays, yes. and and they're kind of the same. Sure. And also, the percentage that that are using to help pay from the friends. Mm -hmm. Now, is there? Why would we try to do everything in one year versus? spread out over a, period, a couple, two, three, or four years? Sure, I mean, I'm more than happy to, to work with the, the board, the finance committee, to make it feasible um, for towns. It's just, this was our, especially since you guys were asking for an expanded services budget, I just thought it might be a good year to go for it, but in the level services budget, the head of adult services position, adding those hours, that's really crucial to the library's ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that really does need to happen this year. The Thursday hours, um, you know, increases to our materials, that yeah. we're doing okay on and we can wait. So, so could I ask for you to work with Jeff and prioritize your, and, and again, we haven't, we, we don't, we haven't seen the total budget yet. Yeah, of course. Could I ask you to, work with Jeff to try to prioritize with the, the the trustees and you and then you talk with Jeff about prioritizing so if there are available ways that we can do it we can we could look at what your priorities are yeah Would I, that can, be okay? I can tell you right now our priority is adding the the extra hours to the head of the adult services yeah and, and that's and that's fine yeah. but and, and again we're nothing we're saying there isn't anything that we're saying right now that's going to be of put in stone. So, yeah. um, who who knows? I mean, the governor hasn't come out with her budget yet, so we have no <laughs> idea. And I did. I think she said in Boston she wasn't talking about to the end of March. Beginning of March, yeah. Yeah, a lot is up in the air for sure. Well, and 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 that it used to be that used to be H one, 
and that would be the least amount of money that we could anticipate way back. And then, then the House of Rep would come at the end of March, and then the Senate, and then, but we would only go with H1 be, because it usually would, that once H1 was out, it, you wouldn't be lower. You could be more, but you wouldn't be low. You wouldn't go lower than that. But who, for the last six years, we can't. It doesn't make any sense to us anymore. So if you could prioritize, because, and, and I'm not, when, when I, I know about the uh, your extended hours, mm -hmm. so I, I have heard that many times. Yes. Um, and the one thing I will say is that you're, if you're talking about using, I would hope the friends wouldn't start, stop raising funds. Never. Because... <laughs> I, because I think that there's a lot of things that the friends' monies goes for in their programming that are very be beneficial to a lot of a lot of different age groups, not just children, not just older people, younger people, it, but the entire spectrum. So, absolutely, yeah, and that that should be the friends' priority is you know funding those things that are considered the essentials, but to our patrons they are essential. Yeah, so I so I can understand why you'd be more as long as we just keep programming. Yes. Because that's that's the important. Yeah. I, I think that's important. It wouldn't be a decrease in fundraising at all. It just would allow the friends to use the funds that they do raise um, towards the things that the town doesn't sponsor, which is yeah. technology and programs. Okay. Lauren. I was just gonna say at one time, very briefly, the town totally covered the materials expenditure requirement. And that has just gone back and back and back and back to the point now where we are reliant on the friends to meet roughly, what did you say, 30, about 30 percent of what we absolutely have to spend to maintain our, you know, state, yeah. um, state aid and our, uh, our, you know, status sure. with the state. So it's, you know, we're quite dependent on that fundraising. I think we're all, um, committed to continuing it, but um, we would like to be able to use it you know, for a variety of purposes, and really most of the money that friends raise just go directly into the amount that we are required to spend on materials. Agreed. Agreed. Crystal? I'm all set. Thank okay, you. Okay, no good. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Anything else? Jeffrey? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, last year the you and the trustees requested um, the head of adult services had an hours increase from 16 to 20. Yes. It was increased from 16 to 18. So why 25 this year? Um, we, at the 18 hours, um, we're seeing more of a need, <laughs> honestly. And since we, you know, last year we were still in the process of opening back up, we've been open for a full year and seeing what our patrons' needs are now where they really are coming in and, and requesting those kinds of, you know, like one-on-one -on -one personal attention from employees, especially with technology help. I think that 25 hours a week would really be sufficient. We've also had this person uh, serve as acting director for an extended period of time and just knowing um, how many extra hours they worked above <laughs> their 18 hours um, and really struggled to get everything done. Um, 25 hours does seem sufficient, and looking at what other local small libraries um, who do have an assistant director position, they seem to be 25 hours a week seems to be what they are working. Thank you. Did it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, did you want to talk, Chris? Justine. Um, I just want to say, on behalf of the board, that is absolutely our number one priority. Um, our library is, as you all know, amazing. Um, as just, you know, we all saw the art film um, about <laughs> us, about what, what goes on. And it's not just, you know, the, the programs, um, which we also get grants for. I mean, it's, it's a nonstop, you know, the fundraising and everything that they do, but that position um, we really, it really, really, really needs to happen. We have an amazing staff, and um, to, to, you know, to lose anybody or to, you know, have to think about that is just, yeah, we're very lucky, um, and they do an amazing job. So we can't say enough about how we support that position. So, so I'll talk about your 
award. Yes, thank you. Well, no, thank you. <laughs> um, and 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 I I may have taken something out of the award that wasn't written in the newspaper, but go figure. I don't always agree with the newspaper writers, but um, w what it showed, they said, well, there was so many libraries that didn't even participate this year because of for the COVID stuff and everything. And, and I thought that was a reason that your award was even more amazing because during the, do a, there's a lot of, there was a lot of libraries that weren't even in operation or they weren't, they weren't doing library stuff when probably needed libraries the most. Um, but the Sunderland Library through the trustees under, really to me showed that they understood the importance of a library to a community and in this particular case was the COVID um, where we needed the services um, you found a way to deliver the services and and to me that was that should have been it shouldn't have been well four thousand libraries weren't weren't even included to me it was more important that the library you, our library in Sunderland was included because it recognized that we needed to do that they needed to do something to help and you were there to help so I just want to thank you and the trustees for recognizing that taking the initiative to and again you may have thought there's a lot more that you could have done um, or you hope you could do but the way you were restricted but you didn't do it and I think that speaks volumes about Catherine, you and your staff, that you are able to make it happen. And, and you made a lot of us very proud. Nice job. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, a lot of credit has to go to my staff. Um, one of the, my favorite things that my staff suggested and took the initiative to do was to call some residents that they knew were vulnerable, who elderly people who lived alone, and to make sure they had what they needed. So. Um, it was really a group effort, and we couldn't have done it without the support of our trustees either. Yeah, but see, in and, and, and the library takes care sometimes of the, it's kind of like the senior center, the people that may, may not be the most vocal or, or kind of the sh in the shadows. And, and you guys should talk. Nice job. Thanks. Again. I think okay. it's also, if I can, it's, I think it's also important to point out how vital it is for people who are economically struggling to have access to the library because of the ability to access services and materials and things like that um, without having to pay for them. And um, with inflation being at all-time highs, I think we're in a place where um, we're only seeing more demand for the services um, as time goes on. That's going to just get worse and, well, better from one perspective, but yeah. um, yeah. harder to, to harder manage, for, for sure. And it, one of the biggest things that, I, you know, I mentioned that people are coming in for help with technology, but a lot of what we're seeing is people coming in who need to use technology to apply for a job, and they've never had to apply for a job online, they have to do it now, and they need our help to you know how to use a computer, how to apply for a job, and then how to use the technology that's going to be needed of them when they are employed. So, it's definitely a big need. The one, the one thing I, I did learn through COVID, from doing the MRC work, is that a lot of people think seniors don't know how to use computers. Oh, computers, that they're they're a valuable resource. Kind of what you're talking about, computers and and, and the use of them and, and the and getting people involved. And I met some pretty amazing people that were able to somehow work through the uh, complexity of the state and their computer trying to put together stuff. And I was just amazed. And I would say if, if somebody, if, if an 86 year old comes and volunteers to do some computer work, probably take them up on it because they're pretty damn good. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. Justine? Um, just one more point is that, you know, with the new, um, housing is opening up over here and I think that's going to be another um, source of great you know people coming in but it's also going to be a lot more people that you know the library is going to be needing to service they can walk to the library they can use that's the computers. one reason we thought the library awesome. it would be a perfect location for the senior housing is because the 
library was in, within a walking distance. I, that was one of that was for us. That was one of the selling points. Absolutely, Start, and, you know, programming we can add. We've already talked about setting up a little you know kiosk over there, some sort of you know outreach to people and. Just to let you know, we're trying to put in pickleball courts this year. So. Oh, that's not that. <laughs> we're also, um, one of the things on, on the select board's radar is doing improvement on the sidewalk along School Street to facilitate that walk being, you know, a little less bumpy and whatnot. Nice. All right. Anything else, guys? Catherine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeffrey, uh, inspectors. Yep. Hey right, Tom. All right, what do you got to tell us? Um, I kept it level funded. Figured because the board wanted to get the um, percentage or anything, I just leave it like that. The only exception exception was um, a permanent coordinator. Um, Dolores Rinzi has been over five years with me helping. Um, she used to come in the office and uh, fill up the permits for you know while I do them in. Um, sat with people and now she does a lot of the entering, um, you know, printing up all the things, does a turnover and all for me, above and beyond my regular hours. Um, spends a lot of time with, you know, plumbing and especially electrical, um, going over um, and helping them out with the program and all. So I put um, her in for four hours a week. And I explained it in, the, in an attachment. And the other attachment on there would be um, just an ex uh, explaining the last three years what I had submitted for for the um, budget. Um, some examples, um, as far as the permits, we've, in 2020 we were at 127, we went to 169, um, 21, and then this year we're at 181. Um, trying, with her doing a lot of the computer work and that it gives me more time, Board of Health, we've had a lot of um, complaints or site visits and that for rentals and that along with the fire chief and trying to catch up with um, when Steve can go out, when Chief Benjamin can go out and do the um, annuals and that. Uh, Money-wise, we went, last year we were a little bit more because we had a big um, senior housing project, but we went from you know 39 and change 2020, 115 and change in 21, and then this year we're almost 58,000 in, in revenue. Um, I think the only other thing, since I, I did this the day after I cut the budget, turned it in, is. Um, my alternates. Uh, most towns are going up with their pay, which wouldn't, I mean, it'd have to be voted on by the board, um, but I thought I'd just mention it here that um, right now the alternates get 30 for inspection. Um, I don't leave many. If I just take a week off, I, I bring a computer, I do all the reviews and emails and everything so they don't have to you know, do any of that, but I try to get a hold of the people and do ahead of time any that I know are coming up. But um, an example, like Hadley went from 42 to 50, which will take effect March 1st. Um, but they're right across the board, all their inspectors. And right now we're at 38, and just something that I was going to talk to, to Jeff about um, so I don't lose any alternates. <coughs> um, as far as our plumbing electrical, it's a percentage. So they're, they're OK with where we stand um, with what they're getting. And that's about, about it. So, so Jeff, with the uh, the passing of um, Mr. Murphy. Peter, um, <coughs> how we how how are we doing with the electrical? I was going to have a conversation with uh, the current electrical inspector the next time he was in the building. Okay. Okay. What his interest was, and um, I don't know if you've heard any. I I've only heard good things, and oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's so. awesome. Um, at first, he was just going to come on to, to keep it well. Um, Mr. Murphy wasn't feeling well in that. Um, and he had to have him to take on Hadley as an alternate and took on uh, Paul Miller, the Hadley inspector, as the alternate here mm -hmm. to replace his position. But um, not going to I haven't heard anything about him saying he's done. But, but as long as we can keep, keep him, he'll do a great job, in my opinion. And he has Paul you know, Miller to fall, fall you know, back on for an alternate when he does have Traveler. Okay. Okay, questions? You're, uh, I'm not sure how Dee Dee been able to do this for five years without being paid, though. Gosh, it's my fiance, so he gives me more time. <laughs> so it's a huge help. Today alone, she was on the phone for 20, 25 minutes. It's easier for me to give 
while I'm on inspections to give her cell to talk to a, um, I think it was solar company, some questions on um, the payment wasn't going through, there was something, a glitch with the program that she flipped straight through, so. Okay. Very right. good. Anything else? Nathaniel? I'm good. Thank you. Jeffrey, questions? Just an opportunity, because I asked it to tell the public, so code books have been on for a couple of years, they're on again. They were delayed in the publishing, right? Um, which it's is not that we're not taking the 10th edition. Now they're saying July 1st of this year. July 1st. Um, did you take in the energy code? Every, every six years now, right? Every six years? Yeah, but it's way past. We're, we're way past the energy so, code. So, so, so what happens is that they, Massachusetts now subscribes to the IBC, the IBC. All the international code books. The international code uh, commercial and residential. Yep. <laughs> Massachusetts is a great state. We also have a set of amendments. So the IBC updates every three years, but the state of Massachusetts said they will go every six years. Trying, right, but I think we're at about seven or eight probably by the time we ever get it. So, so you'll see code books on, could be every three years. Yep. No, this is more for the public. I'm yeah. not concerned. I just... And you don't want to buy the info. There's no sense in getting amendments or anything until it is all. Yeah. You know. And the only, the only, and like, and you also, you have, and that's the amendments also, right? Correct. Like chapter one of, chapter one of the IRC, the I, uh, base code, the IBC is 100% mass amendment. You wipe the whole chapter out. Yeah. Which is tough when you're taking, you know, for people coming up now taking the test, you have to forget about the mass amendments because the test of the international. Um, Makes it tricky because that's what you're you know, going by every day in the office. And yeah. The first thing you do is go to the mass code and find out where. Yeah, but then you get the zoning. So it's three yeah. things every, every question. Yeah. So, but. so, in the in energy code is is constantly being three changed. Years. Three years. That and is three years. Bring, since you're bringing that up, it, it's in limbo right now. It's a huge change as of January 1st. Yeah. But they jumped the gun. It, they're saying because we're all stretch code that we're supposed to enforce all these big changes. But I had a training last week with Luis Vera, who's one of the state inspectors, and it's back and forth. Whether we're going to get it or not, they need to say anything because after a permit was done after the first, we're supposed to enforce it. They also want to do with each community, um, when I did a training, beginning of the year, um, on the energy, we want from the state that each town can jump ahead and do something for the 2050 no fossil fuel. And the, the gentleman that presented it said it was going to be that Amherst and Northampton, especially Amherst, is looking into it. Um, really? It's all a good idea, but it's just going to cost so much money that I'd recommend if you do hear something about it, we wait a little while for it. It's bad enough what it's costing people, what, we've, what we're changing to. It's all, it's all you know, great well, ideas. I don't know why anybody would want to build a house now. It, it's probably 20 years. The bad thing is the new house is 20, 30 percent more than you know, building, you can buy something if you, you know, get the market right. So. I know if I was a young, if I was a young man, I'd become a hers Yeah. You know. Right? Yeah. Well, one of them was, he's a uh, certified, you know, building commissioner, but he's making a lot more doing that. So. I know, because so. they're the people that go around and you, because you have to qualify your house for the energy code now. So they make sure that you don't miss any spots in your foam, either that or foam insulator. Right. Those are another good job. And an example of that is we're at 55 for the floor door. And as of January 1st, it's 52. So I had a, uh, the testing come for a final. I have to do a half of tomorrow with the fire chief. It came in 55. I miss a million dollar house. It really, it's sad because it should be a lot better. But so their next permit that they put in after this year, they're going to go down three, which is, it's going to be tough. As of July 2024, we're going down to 42. Yeah. Which even the ones that you know, cape and things like that are going to be tough. And they just changed the windows too, right? Aren't, aren't the windows being changed too? No, nope. no. I have a I have a, a person that said the window order was twenty thousand, but they went. They're going by it, it's point three oh for the U value, right? And they haven't changed, but they're they're trying to say it changed uh, this January was three years ago, right? So uh, they have to appeal it. They have to go to BBRS. Yep. You know, they should have known better. It, they're point three two. Point three two. And and the code's point three oh. See? 
Mm -hmm. it, it's tricky. It's like the solar now. Um, we don't have our 10th edition out, and the fire department now, which is a good idea, um, they're the ones that are enforcing right now the three feet, the 18 inch in a valley for their protection, you know, for access to the roof. And um, like years ago when I was trained on it, it was through California, they've been doing it forever. It's a, it's a great idea. And, uh, but it isn't in our code, so waiting to see what the chiefs want to do. Now, they want to start reviewing and doing that more work for them, because I can't enforce that yet, but they're probably going to want to, and they just gave them more control of batteries, storage. Yep. So, yep. unfortunately, building commissioners don't have the people up in the state level. They're retiring, and we're not replacing them, and we just don't have the knowledge we used to have. So. Well, actually, you're replacing them with bureaucrats, <laughs> right? Oh, I'm sorry, you work for them. You work with them, so you can't say that. Okay. All right, thank you. And any questions on to for Tom? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Jeff? Thank you, Tom. Well, thank you. Have okay, have a great one. Highway budget. George? I hate to just leave on you, but good luck. <clears throat> yeah. So the level funded budget this year, I've got a few, few, a few of them. Highway garage, I went from $2,000 this year due to the, excuse me, the increase in cost of heating oil and all the other material stuff you need for the garage. Um, tree warden, I went up another thousand. Um, it's getting harder to find tree crews that are in the budget cheap enough for towns to use. Um, we have the prevailing wage, so it brings the cost up quite a bit. For the amount of, amount of tree work that we have to do, um, a lot of the tree work that I've been getting done has been done by Eversource on certain trees. They come in and do a lot of tree work for us at no cost. We yeah, do the details for them, the highway department will. Um, saves the town a lot of money, um, probably in the last year we probably had 10 or 12 trees cut down by them easily and I got a few more on the list that we just found the other day that they're coming to look at to take down for us. So a little bit of money in that increased cost for you know some of the stuff that we can do or we have to do. <clears throat> the highway super in, in uh, labor wages and stuff I left that blank until we figure out what uh, the personnel committee recommends and what you guys recommend for raises. Anyways, seasonal wages, I'd like to go up another $500 on that just so I can get more use out of that. That summer helps help person. Uh, it's a big help in the summertime helping us weed whack guardrails and mow and, and paint stop lines and stuff like that. They, they do tremendous work helping us do that stuff and keep us caught up. Um, we use them on other projects through the summertime. If they're not doing that, they come and help us, you know, do cash basins and stuff like that. So it's a it's a big help for us. So so George, are you are you hiring one or two people for the summer? Sometimes I can get two people if I find the right people. But last year I only had one person, so they worked quite a bit with us. Um, I had them come back when I was by myself for a while. Yeah, he helped me through that that part of it. You know, a couple of days here or there while he was going back to school. So um, I do sometimes hire two. But so what year, what ages are you looking for? Usually they're eighteen or above, uh, college age kids. Um, I know there's a program out there now that um, Cindy Schoenberg, I think last her last name is. She's doing, they're doing a program now that you can get like kids from technical schools and stuff like that. I talked to Jeff about it um, briefly on some of the stuff, finding out if we can get underage, under 18 year olds to come and work with the town if we can figure out the insurance for it because the town has to cover them for insurance while they're here. Yeah, like the landscape, they got the landscape service. Uh, yeah, they got all, all that stuff. They they're actually they actually specifically started this program to get people their CDLs and get them interested in you're getting a hoisting uh, license also. Yep, and highway highway stuff like that. So they will pay for if they find the right candidate and they're being useful and 
and they're moving in the right directions, they will actually get them their CDL, pay for it for that child or for that adult, young adult, and help them get their CDL and their oysters, and then they'll try to place them with a town. They'll mm -hmm. call certain towns if they, in that kid's area, in that person's area, and say we got this person. If you guys are interested, they want to work in the town, they want to work in a highway department or construction field mm -hmm. or something. So there is that program out there now, and they're willing to pay up to four weeks and then maybe an additional four weeks on top of that. Yeah, depending on something like that. So that's something um, we're hoping to look into, and I have I've talked to Cindy about it, and she's supposed to be finding finding hopefully somebody. They're starting to work with Franklin yeah, County Tech this year, so which is a good thing. Wow. Okay. Okay, anything else, George? Um, highway department expenses, I've gone up like $5,000 on that. Parts or for materials, for building materials and block and like kept facing stuff and cover pipe and stuff like that. Uh, 3000 on the highway machinery expense for repairs due to increase in cost and, and uh, parts and anything to do to fix the trucks. We've been doing a lot more repair in shop now this year that I got my two new employees. Those guys really like to work on stuff with me and it's been saving the town quite a bit of money. Okay. We just replaced a steering box in one of our large trucks. We pulled it out ourselves, replaced it, and you know we saved the town probably four grand just on repair costs on that probably. <clears throat> Good. Fuel expenses, right now the fuel price is still still not very cheap, so um, I'm mean, anticipating that it's not going to go down very much, so that's why I asked for the extra 4000 for that. So did, did, we ever, did we ever get the uh, highway garage on emergency generator? That has actually happened this week. So we have our generator at the highway garage, which is online. I'm having an issue with the charging thing with it. It's not keeping the battery charged, so it's not starting on the Mondays like it's programmed to do. So they're coming back Thursday to look at that. And then Friday, the company that we just purchased the new generator for the public safety complex is coming to do the startup for that on Friday. The generator? The new generator. The new so so safety. you'll be able to run the gap of the, the pumps and Correct. all of that, right? Yep. So right now, if we do have a power outage at the town garage, I can go outside, physically start that thing, transfer it over to the transfer switch that we right. have to run our apartment. Right now, the police and fire are on their old generator. We haven't disconnected that one yet. That's going to happen uh, Thursday. Yeah. They're disconnecting that, hooking the new one up. Which tra which generator is that? Is that the one that? That's the new gen. I think it's a gen rack that we just bought for that for the police and fire. That's not the one we got from Mount Holyoke College. What, what do you want to do? The one from Mount Hoyo College was supposed to... It was supposed to run both, but the way the generator was set up, which we didn't know, it's it's set up as a split yeah. the split generator, so it didn't have the full potential to run everything. Um, the electrical company that I'm working with did so much research on that thing for me and found out that we actually couldn't do that. We wouldn't have enough power to run everything. So... <clears throat> We looked into purchasing another generator for the police and fire because we had enough money after we initially got that one set up because the tech school did a lot of the work and it was pretty cheap that way. Yeah. Um, so, so, so can can I ask you? So we were supposed to be getting one for here too. Yep. You haven't seen that, right? The generator for here. Yeah. Is that the one that's in the trailer at the public safety complex? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one. Scott Chris, was supposed to be. Doing. Yeah. So, do you know what has to be done on that one? Yeah, so, I think from what I understood back when I was talking to Scott about that a bunch of years ago. Um, that's when your dad got. Yeah, I think they were supposed from the to fish fish pigs. I know it's in the trailer, but I don't know how far 
they got uh, to setting it up in the trailer. I know it's in there, it's mounted. Now they have to come over here, probably have to okay. set up something can, for can, the transfer switch. Can, can you talk to your, your generator person to mm -hmm. take a look at that? And ask them to ask see what it would cost to get that operational. So, that, so, so the plan was that generator was supposed we were supposed to put it out here, so you could plug it in, so and we could plug and we could power this building and the library. So you don't go to do both. So right. you'd have to run a connection over to that building and stuff too. Well, you need to transfer right to transfer a switch. Yeah. So, can you see what it would take to get that? Yeah, and I'll ask them to look at that generator and see if the generator has enough power to do both. Okay, and and then then I would like Jeff to find you know uh, see what it toss it to transfer switches put in this building and that building so that we would have generator for here also the case in case we have severe cold like we did before we had to run warming centers and or and again we we have the school yeah but and would we do a lot. But that being said, if you have to have cooling cooling places in the summertime, right. this would be, you know, we 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 can cool. We have AC, so 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 can can we look into that? And that, that'd be great great use for ARPA money. Yeah, and I think we definitely want to have a cooling or warming center close to the 120 Main Street. Where they could walk to, if in the event it was. If they needed. have failure over there, absolutely. Okay. So you could do that, George. Yeah. No After you take a look at it. Yeah, I'll talk to him on uh, Thursday when they're here, and Friday too with the, with the generator up and stuff like that. So. Thank you. Okay. Anything else you got, George? Uh, expanded budget. Um, I put in. Put in a new employee for the expanded budget because I know Jeff, myself and Jeff talked about possibly doing like a ground building slash highway type person mm -hmm. in the future. Um, I don't know if it would be ready for, for this year coming up. I think we still need to do do a little bit more research on it. So, what, what so, entail. so I, I, I would, I, I think that we'd want to look at <clears throat> We many years ago we had building maintenance a building maintenance person. Yeah. We do not have that person. Correct. And there's things that can be done at the elementary school, that can be done here, library, that would probably you know, any of our town buildings that right now we're just so kind of like a handyman. Yeah. But I had also someone that maybe could plow in the wintertime. Correct. Or if he wasn't doing something okay right so i I'd, I'd like to look at that yeah i i think that would i think that would be beneficial to us it'd be beneficial for you also right i think i think it'd be a big help for us um especially in the winter time it's hard getting harder and harder to find people that want to plow and stay up all night with us and keep the roads clean wow. do all that stuff and then be able to maintain all our grounds and, and buildings and, and stuff like that I think would be a big help. And, and i think you know when we let when we when we have to make some very difficult decisions when, when we have to lose greg but having him you know some may have considered a luxury but there's a lot of things that get that are not getting done at the school because a they just don't have the time right and and i and I personally think that they're, they're great. A very good thing was bringing in the uh, facilities manager. But I watched Bill. Bill's been trying to. Yeah, he's been. I, well, he he, 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 you know, and again, I, I appreciate the fact that he tries to figure out, and he's not afraid to get dirty to figure out Correct. why something's not happening or not happening. Right. So I think that's good, but sometimes he needs he needs another set of hands to help him. Right, and I know he's called on us a few times to help him over there at the school, which which we have no problem. Yeah. If we're not in the middle of something, I'll, I'll shoot over and give him a hand doing. Yeah, and something. you can't do it today. You get to help him tomorrow. Sure. Yeah. Right, but we're also expanding the number of 
things in town that need attention. Yeah. You know, you got the new kayak kiosk, the bathrooms are going to be redone, things like that. And they're going to need things like being stained and, you know, some little minor maintenance, well, look, water bathroom. sealing. Who, who, who takes care of, who, who winterizes the bathrooms? I think it's baseball, actually. Yeah. Maybe. I, I haven't never done it. Right, but there's just all these little things, too, or that it would... forgotten. Right, that would be great to have yeah. someone who can take care of. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, George. Yeah. All that's up. All right. Especially if you get your pickleball courts. Huh? Said, especially if you get your pickleball courts. Again, you have to have, you have to do you have to attract people to the center of town. You got That's right. But then someone's got to dump the trash there. And well, oh, did you see how did you see how much did you see how, how many people use the walks now, or, or even just having someone, you know, start maintaining? I, I I personally don't think that the that an, an, a volunteer committee should be in charge of maintenance of a park, and and we have a budget to maintain that park and. You know, it's getting harder and harder to find volunteers. That's for sure. Yeah, it is. Okay. Capital stuff. Yep. Go ahead. Capital. Um, let's start with the loader. So the loader, loader has been, been on the capital request for two years now. Um, the one we had is a two thousand John Deere five forty four. She's getting old. We keep keep her up, and keep her maintained, and um, she's got about a little over eight thousand hours on it now, which is pretty high for a for a loader that's used quite often. Um, got a budgetary number of about two hundred forty thousand. I did get one quote back. It's kind of a budgetary quote. It was about two hundred thirty thousand. That's for a cat. I'm still waiting for um, a quote from John Deere and Volvo, I think, to kind of get better numbers um, for that. It's it's getting quite expensive. I think to, uh, last year, I think the loader was 190000 for for a quote from the same loader. So it's gone up quite a bit. Um, the single axle dump truck, um, we have a 2,000 single axle pump truck right now that we've been putting a, a lot of money into. It has a double frame on it and the frame is probably separated by an inch, inch and a quarter between the two frames now. Um, that's what happened to our, our red truck that we had. The frame split apart and, and cracked, so that's why we had to get rid of that one. So I'm assuming this one's going to do that sometime soon. We are keeping the thing fluid filmed and maintained as best we could. We had a sink probably I don't know, eight thousand into it this year with the new new radiator and the water pump and a couple other things in it this year. Um, that truck I got. I put 275000 on this, but the quote I got back was for 298500 That same truck last year was, uh, last year or the year before, was almost 100000 less. And it's very hard to get trucks now. So when you order a truck this year, you can't expect to see it until next year. In freight liners, there are internationals. I called to get a quote on that. The guy's like, you might as well wait till 2024 because all the trucks they allocated for that, for that, this area are all sold already. So if the company told them, here's 200 trucks, they've sold every one. They told us. So it's getting harder and harder to get anything. Um, this truck will help us do our everyday work through the summertime and plow snow in the wintertime. It does not have a wing, it's just a regular all-purpose body. Um, that's it. 
that. So you have to get you would you wouldn't have to get a um, sanding body for it also. It, I put it for an all-purpose body, so it, it'll do both. It comes with that option to sand, do shoulders, uh, haul, haul anything. It comes with a plate inside it that blocks the chain and stuff like that. So. You think that's better than? Uh... I do. I, they, they come in very handy. You can use them for. You can use them in the summertime too. The all-purpose body. You can do shoulder work with them. So when you pave roads, you can run that thing right down the side of the road, dump gravel right out there and smooth it out with the guys behind you. And you can you can do shoulders probably ten times faster than you can do it with a backhoe dribbling it out. You don't worry about the salt. No, we, it away. we're pretty we're pretty regimented on washing our equipment. So if it snows and there's nothing in the future. We wash those trucks and clean them constantly. And we fluid film everything. Twice a year, usually. Okay, George. And the other capital I'm asking for is a, one of a small vibratory roller to help us start doing more, uh, more uh, pot, hollow patching and paid, small paid jobs when we Especially now that we have that milling head, we can mill out certain sections of the road, clean it out, and then we can re-roll it, roll it down. This is not a super high priority because I do sometimes beg borrow and steal from other towns and, and use their stuff as, and they they come down and borrow stuff from us. So it's kind of like a give and take type thing. So, but in the future, I'd really like to get one because we can use them to pack our shoulders down. Um, we borrow. In neighboring towns this year, and when we did our shoulders up on 47 after paving, we went up through there with a roller and really rolled them, and it, it really packed it in there. We didn't get much wash out this year because usually we just roll pack it with the truck. So you got a hot mix box now, right? Yeah, we've had that for quite a few years now, and that thing's awesome. And it works it's well? Really handy. Yeah. Really handy. And that's so eventually, I'd really like to get a backhoe roller for us. Uh, I think a backhoe would be, I mean, I'd like an excavator, a small excavator, a real excavator. They're nice, they're handy. You can do a lot with them, but I think a, a backhoe loader would be better for us in case our loader ever went down, we'd have a way to load trucks. Um, the backhoe will help us clean our ditches, you know, dig our own catch basins, I won't have to hire somebody or rent, rent a piece of equipment. Right now, that's what we do. We rent. There's a local guy that he lets me rent a trailer from him and his and his excavator. So we've been using that quite a bit the last few summers. Um, I hire a guy out of out of uh, Waitley that comes and does a lot of work for us, Ronowski Excavation, and um, so it'd be nice and handy to have have one. More so than a mini X. I. I thought about a Mini X, maybe even on a track, but then we'd have to get a trailer, which is not a bad thing. We can just truck it here and there. Okay, so you you would you you'd want a track, not not rubber I, tires. I'm not sure if I'd want a track or a wheel one. I'd have to really look into it more. I know we test we tested out a wheel loader a couple years ago, a couple summers ago. Um, I liked it. It was nice. It was a small one. It wasn't a, a real big one. Um, I know Leverett and Waitley got uh, the next size up from what I was looking at. I think Montague, I think Montague bought the wheel one, the smaller one, I think. One of the towns that I can't remember what channel it was. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably. Yeah, but it's. Because he has to use a wheel. And I know they, got, they just got a new Mini to a smaller Mini, um, a track one. But, uh, yeah, I, I do like the wheel ones. When we priced it out two years ago, I think it was only like $87,000. So it wasn't a lot of money. But I haven't got any colds back from these. Everyone's taking forever to get colds back to you. So I got to call them like three on, times. On the uh, backhoe? Everything. Backhoe, the trucks. I got three more people that I called about trucks in different bodies because the body I got a price from I thought was a little high. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to save the town money by outsourcing and try to find different stuff that we could use and that will still benefit us. 
Yeah, it it's it's interesting buying stuff right now. So yeah, so you get you gotta do a lot of shopping around to try to get what you what you need. So well, it's all it's all you want to make sure you spec what you need Correct. and what you want. Right. <coughs> I know I know last time when we bought payloader that you have now. Um, it was interesting because one of the specs was the size of the bucket. Yeah. And you know, if I remember right, we, we were looking for a center piston. Neither, I think it was a three yard bucket, right? Is that a three yard bucket? Yeah. And and I think Kamatsu had a two and a half yard bucket, but it was. The, it was a really they're both commercial units but it was like the difference between of a, tor a lightweight versus yeah. a medium dude just just by and so we were able to throw out the all the cost was significantly cheaper right but it wasn't the spec it wasn't the spec we, we wanted it and, and again I mean you you have to have that you we want to be able to but it wasn't comparing apples to apples that's right. why it was so much cheaper right and then, you know, if any of these do pass, I will, you know, I'd definitely sit down and, and do everything to what we need and spec it out. And I know when we purchased, when we purchased the Western Star that we had, we went out to, to bid on that. I think we went through Ricard and they helped us bid that instead of doing a state, state bid. Um, sometimes a state bid is cheaper, sometimes it's not. But I guess the way they have some of them set up now, it's, it's pretty, pretty competitive now. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was kind of... Some things you can get cheaper, some things you couldn't, but now I think it's pretty competitive. Okay. All right. Anything else? That's all I got. Wow. She's only a million dollars. Getting, getting. Two pieces of half a million. All right. Thank you, George. Thank you. Any questions for me? Yeah, I think we're good. I know, like the cost of that loader, that doesn't include like trade-ins or any of that stuff, because they didn't even want to come out and talk to me about that kind of stuff yet. So I'm assuming we could probably get maybe fifty grand for a trade-in for that loader. Yeah, that's thirty-five thousand more than we got last time. Yeah, when the tranny went, they wanted to give us sixty-five for it, but I don't think we'll get that. Out. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You go. All right. Jeffrey Arpaquest. Oh, sorry. Select board presentation. Do we walk around the other side of the table? Huh? <laughs> Do we go sit over on that side? Nah. Uh, so the proposed bud select board budget uh, level funds the moderator stipend, the select board salary, um, select board admin assistant uh, would be determined based on the personnel committee's recommendation. Um, no change to the advertising budget, uh, no change to the select board expense, no change to the grant writing consultant expense, um, a decrease of $3,665 in professional development, um, town administrator salary, dependent on contract negotiations, um, town administrator expense down $1,600 to $3,000. There is a new line for a request um, to create a new position, a finance director um, with an annual salary of 75000 uh, No change to the town audit. The lawn mowing increased. We talked about that um, two months ago. And uh, no change to veteran grounds maintenance. I don't think that what I sent you has this, but technology is actually going to increase. We had a meeting on Thursday. It's probably going to be twenty-five thousand. We're switching over to a different service plan that gets us unlimited hours of service. Um, it's slightly more expensive, um, and then we also have to renew our 
um, server warranty and the sonic wall firewall um, for this building and the public safety complex. So I'm going to be requesting 25,000 for that. Um, town council, they increased their rates 20%. So I'm increasing the request 20%. Uh, town report stayed the same. <clears throat> town office operations stayed the same. Town office supplies increased by $1,000. Previously, we got a, um, I believe it's a mass DEP uh, buy recycled grant, which we basically used every year. We put out a memo that says, hey, we have a preference for using recycled products. And then the state would give us a check and we would use that check to buy printing paper. And they are not doing that anymore. So we need to pay for our own printing paper. So that's why that increase happened. Um, town office energy. I think energy prices are going up, so that's why that and the energy contingency went up. Um, the only other th two things I wanted to mention, one is it's not on here, but since the recreation coordinator doesn't typically come in to present a budget, um, there was a request to return his hours. Um, I believe previously he had been working 18 hours, about 10, 15 years ago, and then due to budgetary reasons, it was cut back to 12 hours. Um, given that we are coming out of COVID and there's a lot of interest in sports and outside activities, um, he's requested to, to increase his hours back up to, to 18. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, the professional development and the town administrator expense were reduced because they typically don't get spent and I realize I am asking for a new position <laughs> for a lot of money and um, am trying to reduce expenses elsewhere to to cover help cover some of that cost do you, uh, do you have a uh, finance director's job description I do I think just pass it for um, I don't, uh, do I have it printed out? I don't think I printed it, but I can pull it up on the screen if you like. I just handed him oh, my okay. copy. I have it from the previous meeting tonight. So, essentially, um, I see this position do, doing several things. Um, primarily, working with the treasure collector and the accountant to make sure that um, we stay current on our reconciliations. We're able to file free cash on time, close the books, all that stuff. Um, also assist with the budgeting process, both capital and operating. Do sort of the grant budget tracking for all the grants that we do um, and reporting. And then depending on um, availability, I mean, those would be the priorities if they have the ability and, and capacity um, it would be great if they could do some of the HR benefits stuff as well. Um, so that's kind of what, what we've been thinking about or what I've been thinking about for this position. So, so why wouldn't we combine that position and, and hire an accountant? When I look, I, I just go quick on, on the thing. It's pretty similar to accountant's job description. It is. Um, we, we could hire an accountant. I don't know that hiring, I don't know that hiring somebody with accounting expertise would necessarily come with the other experience. And I'm also, I'm not opposed to talking about the idea, but I wonder how it would work with a finance director and slash accountant overseeing the treasure collector, if there would be an issue with that at all or not, I, I haven't thought about it. But um. I, I would, I would say that the town administrator would still oversee the collector treasurer and econ. I, I'm just looking, I'm just looking at, I'm just looking at how much we spend on an account mm -hmm. per year now, and 
what we get or don't get and what's more needed. You, you can hire a financial director, but if you don't have an accountant doing the work and, and your, if your financial director can't do the accountant's job. So that this is something that came up in, in the personnel committee meeting and, and my response uh, was that part of the challenge is that I don't feel qualified to say whether or not an accountant is doing a good job or not doing a good job. Uh, I can't, I, I can oversee, I can manage people, but I am not an expert in accounting. So my fear would be that we hire somebody that is, and there's still nobody that's overseeing whether or not they're doing a good job or not. And if we hire them, then it's not even the fur cock. <laughs> there's, there's, you're relying on me to make sure that they're doing a good job and I will do my best, but I don't have a degree in finance and I'm not an accountant. Um, and, and so that's, that would be my concern with just hiring an accountant. Yeah, but you still, we, every year we, we, have our, we have our books audited, right? We do. And the audit comes back very well because the audit is two years behind. And at that point we, we have caught up, we have closed our books. And so they don't see the delay, the, the lack of reconciliation, which has really been the issue and causing the delays in, in closing the books and certifying free cash. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I would say, I don't have to be an accountant to say, have you reconciled your books today? Are, are, we, are we reconciled? Are we reconciled? I'm always concerned. I have been for years, and Scott, Scott before I, well, no, Scott and I have always been concerned, but when Scott was a select board, we were always concerned about the, if, if, we're, if we're completing our paperwork now to submit what happened starting July 1st up to this point, or December, or whatever, so it's already six months, have we been, has the accountant, tr collector, treasurer, have, have, has the work been getting done? Or are we all spending our time going backwards? So I, I think it'd be no different than asking Bob from FERCOT right now, hey, are we, do we have, is it, is the accountant recon reconciled? Okay. You, you know, I, and, and again, I, I'm, I'm willing to have, a, I'm willing to have that discussion um, but so if if you if you look at finding an accountant that has more experience, I, I, I mean, typically you, you're a town can have an auditor, right? Mm -hmm. Town can have an, an accountant, but typically. The accountant and the auditor, most towns our size don't have an auditor because they have an accountant. They're supposed to be doing the job of an auditor, typically, right? Yep. So I, I'd like to have that come. What do you guys think? Do we know how much we spend currently on accounting services? Like 27000 I'm sorry? 27000 Yeah. How much? 56000 uh, plus in another fifteen thousand for the software annually. Okay, so there you go, seventy thousand. So if we were to, we well, would still have, if have we were to some get somebody who was both a both a finance director and an accountant. We, Chris was right. We didn't necessarily see the the money the the technology part of it go away, but we could see two thirds of this cost go away in our contracting. Yes. So another part of my fear is that it's, there are very few municipal accountants, much less municipal accountants that can also probably be, I, I'd imagine it's harder to find a finance director slash accountant if it's hard to find an accountant. So my, my fear of leaving the FERCOG at this point is then we don't have the FERCOG's resources. And I, I understand that maybe it hasn't been working out great so far, and I acknowledge that, but um, 
there, there's still a support structure there, I guess is, is what I'm saying. And I think that, you know, if, if we come back and, and maybe the finance director, and I'm happy to have this conversation, isn't the right position, but um, at least can do that evaluation. And another thing we discussed at personnel that I, I should have brought up is we are still having the Division of Local Services planning on coming out here to do the financial management uh, review. And so part of what I was going to ask them is, hey, we're having a conversation about a finance director, accountant. Um, what do you think? Do you think we need either of these positions? Do you think, the, you know, the right. do current we need people both? are doing a good I mean, job? Like, what do you, you know, give us your advice as experts. And then, you know, if they say, hey, yeah, you don't need a finance director. You really need, uh, and this accountant's great. You just need her for 40 hours a week, not 15. You know, then we can make an informed decision. But I think that from my perspective, we need to, we, we need to do something in that office, and whether it's you know, um, changing the account or accountant or accounting service provider or, or hiring a finance director, I think that I, I my goal for next year is that that you know um, I don't know September no no later than November we will have our free cash certified, um, and so if that's Hey, hire a consultant and pay him fifty thousand dollars to come in and fix everything, and then we're good. I'm fine with that too. I, I'm not married to a finance director. I just, um, I, I think that given the the current situation, um, having somebody that is more familiar with finance than I am um, here on a regular basis would be very helpful. Is would an option be doing a part time finance director? Come meeting in the middle, seeing how that goes, and if it turns out that it's a huge boon to the town, but we don't have enough hours, and we'd love that on more hours, then next year we talk about it being a full-time position. It actually might be easier to hire a part-time finance director that's qualified uh, because you can hire maybe a retiree or um, something like that. So I'm not opposed to that idea at all either. Okay. So the thing with and again, I'm just asking the question. If you go with a part-time, would there still be the assistance that you're looking for to help with grant management? Or would there, if it was a part-time, would all their time be spent in that collector accounting area of so my guess would be that the first year would be spent all in there, getting systems set up, everything running smoothly. Um, but no, I, I don't, maybe they could help, once everything was set up, maybe they could help with the grant tracking and stuff, I think. Um, probably not so much with the benefits and other things, but so some help. But. Another reason that we had talked about a full-time position is just having another um, body in the office. So when the treasurer collector is not here, somebody can take the checks. Um, if the clerk goes on vacation, it's just another person that can say, hey, yeah, I'll take that message or that's where the mailboxes are. Um, so if, it, if it's a part-time position, there may be a request for another part-time position that would probably be a more um, administrative assistant office entry manager. level pay yeah. type job um, so so it would still be a cost savings but there may be a request for for another part-time position if this were part-time okay yeah because when I, when I go when, when I go over the thing the um, there's many, many of the tasks are accounting tasks and or treasure and or treasure tasks. And, and I think that, the, sorry. No, I, 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 and again, so, so, so I, I wonder if, so are we really, you know, really looking for 
if are you really looking for an accountant because because you you could uh, here's a question how how how's going how's a financial director going to keep the problems from occurring that you have now that because a financial director's as I read this thing is not going to do the accounting's accountant's job it's going to say you need to do your job well I guess somebody say who you need to do your job already right and I guess what I'm saying is when when the accountant and the treasure collector go I can't do my job I go no no then, then you then you would call Scanlon or uh, another group to you know an outside an outside auditor group and say hey who what who's responsible for this and and I I actually think and, and again I, I it's, it's easier for me to think because I'm not here doing the day to day stuff I understand that but to understand I I mean. I think I know what an accountant's supposed to do. I don't. I can't. I can't. I'm not an accountant. I. I. To. To. For the life of me, I don't understand why anybody would want to be an accountant because they. They are. They go to a different. A certain level of. Of. You know, to an accountant, you're off a penny. It doesn't matter if you're off a penny or a million dollars. You're still off. So something's wrong. And and they 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 will find where that penny's missing. That that that's a very 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 detailed oriented person. But I also know that having a detail an accountant like that, we I and we had one in Charlotte Naparato who was just that type of accountant. I learned so much about account. I didn't know anything about accounting until I talked to her, and I would spend hours talking to her and. I, I, again, I don't think, I'm, again, I'm not an accountant, but I understand what an accountant's supposed to do. You know, and they have certain deadlines. Yeah. And you can say, okay, by the 15th of this month, last month, things has to be reconciled. If they're not reconciled, why? I, I, I think, I, you know, and that's what Charlotte would tell me. So, I, again, how many to how many other towns around here have financial directors? Um, not not a lot, but I also think that most towns have a more have more experienced employees in their finance department than we do. Hey, right, we can talk. We'll talk. It's fine. Yep. That's the first I've heard about it, so about so I'm I have a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next, what's up next, Jeffrey? Anything? Yes, we got a couple more things. Um, the excess and deficiency funds coming back from last week. Uh, I incorrectly stated that I thought it was um, previously appropriated funds that were being reallocated. It's actually funds that. Um, that like free cash haven't been used um, in their budget that they would like to now spend. And I will say that thank you Frontier for actually following the law because in the past some administrators <coughs> may not have done that. And I, 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 I think that's a I, I and again I, I applaud Darius um, and, and he's done it now. He he's been doing it very consistently. So that's that's why I asked. Any, you, Nathaniel, Crystal, you have questions? No, I just I didn't get the memo about the blue. Well, you're close. Wow. Well, it's just Jeffrey? because we live next to each other, you know. If you live in the neighborhood, also, you. Know I know. I didn't. I didn't see. I so I didn't know today was a Sunday and Blue Day. Sorry. Um. You have any questions? What do you say? You wanted to use it to do? Um, to put it towards equipment uh, replacements, and some of it's going to the tennis courts. I think. Oh, and boilers. And boiler. 
that was going to be things that were going to be coming across as capital requests. So six of one, half dozen other. If they've got the excess and deficiency to pay for it, great. That's one less thing we have to figure out. All right. Any questions? So, so basically, if we agree with this, then they, at this point, because they're saying they want to spend this additional hundred thousand dollars. It hasn't passed at a town meeting, so there's two choices. They have two choices. Either they can ask the select boards in each community and or if the select board wants, we could call a special town meeting and we could discuss Sunderland's $32,000, about $30,000. Just to clarify, this is all under the five percent cap, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. So we're not going to be seeing money coming back to the town either way, right? No. No, their yeah, so. total budget was twelve point two, about so five percent was six hundred thousand. Okay. Motion. Unless you want to go to town meeting. Oh no! I. Come Reading the next thing up. Sorry. <laughs> I motion we... You weren't talking... You weren't listening to this riveting conversation? I was listening to that, All but right. then I was right. anticipating the next one. Right. I motion we... Ex approve. approve the excess and deficiency, how they want to use Reallocation it. Reallocation of funds. Reallocation of funds. Seconded. How they want to use it's the same board. $100,000. Of $100,000. Seconded. All right, motion made and seconded to approve the request from Frontier Administration to reallocate $100,000 of excess and deficiency to fund projects so stated in their letter to us. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zeros up. Our request for $195,000. Yes. So That's the, one I was reading. the elementary school oil tank is um, is past its uh, expected life span. Uh, the school committee and administration uh, hired Ty and Bond to do a, a preliminary analysis and an estimate of probable cost um, to replace the tank and. The cost the, was about 100. They had three different types of tanks, um, but the school is asking for $195,000 to install a 6,000 gallon underground storage tank. So, just for context, Tom, because you weren't at the last meeting, um, the reason this is coming back onto our plate is. The time frame that they're being given for the tank, to, from ordering it to delivery, plus the time it takes to do the engineering for the project, puts us in a position where if we want to get it done, not this summer, but next summer, it, we have to have the money ready for it before we would necessarily be able to have money ready for it um, if we go through town meeting for this. And not wanting to wait another entire year, because you really can't do that in the winter and you can't do that while the kids are around. Um, we thought it was a good idea to make it an ARPA request because we can get the ball rolling on that a lot faster with ARPA money than we can with other funding sources. Um, and I mean, we, the report indicates that it could go any time, and it's not just a matter of, oh darn, you know, this 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 town asset is damaged. It's also environmental cleanup, potentially having it happen in the middle of the winter when students are in school and. All of a sudden, we have no heat for extended periods of time. Um, it was really a, a, a the urgency was stressed, and the time frame made it so that we pretty much have to, if we're going to have it do that happen next summer, we'd have to to get it the money in the next like two months. I think is what the, the yeah, it's a sixty is. week turnaround on the tank. They yeah. said, and I think it had three months on the the engineering. So, so I get so my only I, my only question is that our the school then is not going to try 
is going to stay on oil heat for the few foreseeable future. They're not trying to look at uh, an alternative, greener. So my general understanding of that is that if this has been a conversation we had five years ago, we could make that a priority. But we're in a position where the time it would take to engineer, procure, and install some other system would make this tank that's in potential to fail be in service longer than we'd want it to be. Um, and that getting the tank in the ground is, is such a priority at this point that I mean, we, we could we could go a different direction, but then we're also, it's definitely not happening for next summer, it's happening for... So how, how big is your tank? 6,000. How much? 6,000. What's the present tank? 10,000? 10, 10,000. And one of the concerns was if you go any smaller than the 6,000, the oil company will charge us more per gallon because they already don't like coming out and delivering the, the tank size it is. They want to get a bigger tank size um, because they, they, they could send a tanker out if we had a bigger tank size. Currently, they're sending out like two or three of their normal trucks. If we go smaller, the concern one of the concerns is that the oil, oil companies are going to charge more. And so, yeah, sure, we saved some upfront money, but then we're paying more every year for the next however many years. Yeah, so the estimated fuel consumption is just over 23,000 gallons. So a 10,000 gallon tank is only really a little over twice a year fall, fill. So we're moving from two and a half fills to four fills a year. Well, five or six, because they won't let it run bone dry before that's, they fill that's it. True, that's true. It'll be five or six trips out. We, we had discussed this, um, I had discussed this earlier with, with Bill, the facilities manager, la last year, and it seems like we're on borrowed time with the tank anyways. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I guess another option would be we could go whole hog on the ARPA money and throw a lot more money at it and have them start an engineering thing for a, a solar system or whatever. But I think it's probably a, a bigger discussion that would require the finance the team and capital planning and whatnot. Um, I, 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 I'd be very interested is at some point is to talk about, and I think maybe you're on the right track, Nathaniel, about looking at, um, ground you know we, we could look at ground mount solar but we also should be able to we should look at different options for right. my in my opinion you know if we could try to find a more or better heating source for and again things are changing i'm not saying put in a a, a nuclear power microgrid but uh, well, no, I mean, mini splits, heat someday. pumps, something like that would be you right. Know, and and Westinghouse is doing it, and there's a lot of um, grants for that kind of stuff. And if this again, if this was something we were talking about, like in the next couple of years, this needs to happen. Um, it'd be a lot easier to have that discussion than if we don't secure money for this in the next two months. Um, the chance of having kids without heat and or environmental disaster goes up dramatically. It's yeah. just, right. I, I, so we have to start anticipating the next heating system going in there and whether it starts as well you can put you could put a an electric boiler in. Yep. yep. you know you know a, electric hot water you know they, they make they make a hundred thousand pounds per hour steam boilers so you could i don't know how much they use for but i don't want the electric bill right now right either. but you have to just start anticipating the next system right. and but whether you, that's right. going to be mini splits, whether it's going to be solar covered parking that generate, who knows what it's going to be, but it's once this project is done, it's time to start looking at the next system. Well, yeah. and, and I mean, you make a good point about can we find a stopgap measure that allows us to move away from the oil tank without having to completely revamp the whole system. And if we can do an electric heater, it may be more, even if it's more expensive for a couple of years, but doesn't have the risk of an oil tank leaking into our back into our backyard and buys us the time to then put in solar panels to run it or you know start switching over to to um, heat pumps um, I guess the big question there would be 
what would the what would the cost of that be? Would that be comparable to the tank, or would that be half a million dollars or a million dollars or something like that if we were to try to switch over to electric heat? I I, I know that to do a, a hot water boiler for a probably a, a similar size building that I'm working on right now, you're looking at a million dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if we wanted to go whole hog, go to the town and ask for money and throw as much ARPA money as we can and apply for grants about that, that's great. But I, I'm very nervous about it, uh, us having a, a leak at behind the school while we're halfway through that project. You know? Yeah. yeah well, that, that, we, you, always, you always can rent a boiler also, if you have to. They, they, have, they have boilers that you can rent. So, worst comes to worst, you, there, there are all... Although you can't find rental boilers right now, so. But that's all, that was always an option, so. The other aspect of this is something that Jeff had brought up is that there is grumblings about the government potentially yeah. taking back unused ARPA money. Yeah. And so not that we're like in a rush to go spend it all, but it would not be a bad idea to start thinking about spending some of it in the next Again, I, you know, is, is this a hard price or is this a decimate price? No, there's uh, there's a, the tie-in bond estimate that they said was still valid. <coughs> it's it's right, you know. It, it's definitely itemized. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it it takes in permitting and all that into account. You got to hit the open thing up there in the left corner. Because we did ask that at the meeting, and they said it was still a valid price. <coughs> I mean, and the other thing to keep in mind, and this goes back to what you were talking about earlier, is there's also capital requests being put in for air conditioners for the school. There's some parts of the school that don't have air conditioning. Uh, if we were to move towards a heat pump mini split system, that would be able to be a two birds one stone kind of thing where we wouldn't have to, to put air conditioners in in addition to having the heat pumps doing both. So there's an added benefit of if we are going to go in that direction of going that direction. Jeff, did you have anything you want to say? Uh, just that in a, in a subsequent conversation, um, <coughs> talking to the school, they said that, you know, really the, the reason that for the rush is the ordering of the tank. And so if we weren't prepared to fund the whole project at this time, especially because the engineering probably isn't going to start for at least six months and prices may change or whatever, um, you know, funding the price of the tank so the tank can be ordered because that's the, you know, the longest timeline, uh, they, they would appreciate that. So I just wanted to. And, and I thought they said it was 30 to 35, but looking at this, it's closer to 70. 70 what? 70,000. Oh, oh. For the tank itself. Yeah, for the tank, yeah. So, okay. and there's a 60 week wait on the tank. Right. Um, I guess one, one option would be to appropriate $60,000 or $65,000 to get the tank ordered. Um, I don't know how this works in municipal, so correct me if this is not possible, but if we were to change our mind after the tank is ordered, can the town sell that tank? Can the town turn around and be like, hey, other towns that were looking for this and are don't want to wait 60 weeks or whatever, we have a tank available? Because that might be, if, if that's, I don't know if that's, you're legally allowed to do that as a town, because I know there's, you know, if it was my personal budget, that's Order what I would do. three and start trying to make money. Yeah. No, you're, you're yes, you, you can absolutely get rid of it. You can auction it off. The challenge is going to be you're probably going to lose a significant amount of money. Um, so, I mean, I guess the question is, um, let's say we order a $60,000 tank and we end up changing directions on this. Could we then, and we sold it for fifty thousand, let's say, and a loss of ten thousand dollars. Is ten thousand dollars worth getting the ball rolling on on Plan A to give us time to do Plan B? Because my my concern is not that we wouldn't necessarily be able to get 
a plan together for a heat pump system or something, some other alternative energy source. It's that I don't want to wait three months to figure that out and then still come back to, okay, well, no, we can't. We have to do the oil tank. And then it's too late to order it in time for the following summer. If we were to get the tank ordered one way or the other, we'd have a plan where within 18 months, it's something's being installed. And if we can get it, if we can get the, the numbers together and we can get it to work for the, the heat pumps, great. But if not, we do have a plan that works. I don't know that you could even get somebody to evaluate in a year and a half and tell you what you need and everything else. Could you, Tommy, for a... No. I, I think it would take much longer than that. First, just to get a consultant in there to tell you, you need this type of capacity, you know. That, that That's probably a couple of years in itself. Yeah. I, 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 again, I think you're, you're pretty limited in what you can do. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to move on with the oil tank and and, and start and, planning the next system. And, and even if you use the oil tank for the next 10 years. Yep. Right. Cause, and, and, and I believe in, if you try to do anything, you're not putting in a new system in the next three or four years. It's going to take you 10 years. Yeah, we, we, have to start, we have to start. We have to. Although. I. I'd love. Nathaniel, your thoughts about taking some of the ARPA money and doing a study on what's available for a future and then start start planning and start using that as a basis to start planning on going forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I like well, that. I'm, I'm, I really like that. I, I, I think I think the oil tank on itself is going to stay. We have to do what you're doing for, and for at least the next century because they just replaced the uh, boilers also, right? Mm -hmm. And, and and they had and I think that was the other reason that they, they said they didn't want to do anything different because they just replaced the boilers. So right now you got the boilers have been replaced, you get the fuel tank replaced, now you got ten years to start working on your next plan. Yep. Right? Or even start putting your next plan towards your air conditioning that needs to be done that can be expanded on. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So, so I, I, I actually I like that. I, 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 I think we should talk to maybe Jeff, maybe you could talk to Bill and Darius, Ben, and, and tell them what we're thinking, right? So do we want to do something like... No, I th yeah, I think you got to... Right, let, let's see if they'll... they'll they, can, they can reach out. They can reach out to a couple different vendors. Yeah. Okay? And right, but do we... Well... I'm just thinking, do, do we want, you know, to put on them these two big things all at once, or do we want to let them get finished with this whole oil tank thing before? No, I, 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 I don't, I think they're very, you're, you're not confused. You're, you're actually starting to look down the road. You need to start looking down the road. No, I agree. Yeah. You need to start looking down the road. Yeah. Just... I, I, I think your study your study is a is a ten to fifteen thousand dollar thing. It's not maybe twenty thousand. It's not hundreds of thousands of dollars because you're not at you're you're asking for op, you know what potentially can be done, right? So sorry, is there any further direction? Because I'm just thinking if we're talking ten years from now, that's twenty thirty something. You know, we just heard 2050, we're going to be, what, net zero? Like, do we want to say, hey, this plan should be for a net zero building? Do we want, want to say absolutely no fossil fuels? Don't have to say it now, but just start thinking about right. what type of direction, because if we're talking 20, 30 years down the road, um, might as well be as clean as we can. Well, that's what you're, that's what we're, you're, you're looking for carbon neutrality. Okay. Yeah. Right? So, uh, and and you could you could do and, and again let let let's you have to have you have to have something to base where you want to go, you know. So is it electric boilers? Is it which they could do? Mm -hmm. They could take the boilers up now. I don't know if we have the capacity of the 
you know, electrical, but may, maybe maybe what we have to do is we have to start looking at um, our next generation of, of PV, you know, doing canopies. Maybe, um, you know, you don't want to cover up the soccer fields or playgrounds, but but right. maybe maybe the walkway, maybe coming down where the walkway is now, maybe you want to put, maybe you want to put canopies over the walkway, you know. Right, cuts down on your sanding and salting and wow. snow plowing and... But, yeah, but so, too, yeah, it's so. also something you probably want to look at, you know, because they're talking about a roof replacement. Do you want a type of roof, you know, is that going to be part of your overall thought? We want a roof that will support this possibility. I, mean, I know that putting the... Well, I know, but I'm just saying it's... <laughs> trust me. I know we got to trust. We got any But again, we could, we could, we could talk about that. So so yeah so so you want a net zero, so look at, at at doing studies to see what what our options may be to start looking for, and it, it could maybe, maybe they want to do geothermal maybe they say maybe you can do, we we have geothermal over at the library, you know, geothermal maybe, is very co very cost effective once it's in place maybe but instead of doing just a just a shallow geothermal maybe you want to go to. 5,000 feet and dig 5,000 feet and tap into the underground and actually you have a heat source. Yeah. You know? But I, I think we should start that discussion. Yep. All right. Agreed. All right, so a motion on the, uh, the 195,000? I have a motion we appropriate 195,000 out of ARPA funds for the oil tank replacement project at the elementary school. Seconded. Okay, a motion made and seconded to uh, approve the request 195000 for the oil tank replacement at Sunderland Elementary School. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3-0. Opiate settlement. Yes, um, so we had had an executive session last week to discuss there's been a, a second settlement. Um, the first one was with the developers of the drug. This one is with the distributors, Walgreens, CVS, um, a few others. And in order to participate in the settlement, um, we need to vote to participate. So I don't know if you want to have any discussion. Um, basically, there's a federal settlement um, against Janssen and uh, these companies related to the distribution of opioids and how they led to addiction and overdose issues. Um, and so these funds are to be used for um, drug rehabilitation and, and remediation and education and stuff like that. So. I think over the course of about 10 years, we're, been, we're supposed to get about $82,000. Um, so we're looking about $8,000 a year. Yes, but it goes up and down. I, I yeah. just got a chart. Yeah. So what we talked about in the executive session the other night was does using that money to help support with a town nurse. Mm -hmm. So... So I right now I entertain a motion to to um, support the um, opiate opioid settlement. Okay, I motion we um, become part of the opioid settlement. Seconded. A motion made and seconded to uh, agree with the opioid settlement with the dis distributors. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Updated caucus warrant. Uh, yep, we just had a planning board member um, who resigned after you had signed the last warrant. Warrant. So uh, the clerk created a new warrant. Everything is the same except uh, one more planning board. Okay. When's, when's that supposed to be held? The caucus is Monday, March 6th, here, uh, 12 School Street at 6 p.m. Okay. Tom Clerk is making more work for us. I don't think Why she did Why did you did say, it. I, can't, I can't believe you just said that? 
I don't think she did anything. Oh. She reacted to a circumstance, which is her uh, job. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, she's trying to try to keep us out of jail, huh? That's right. All right. Motion to uh, accept or to approve the updated caucus warrant. I motion we approve the updated caucus warrant. Seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded to uh, approve the updated caucus, which would include an, a, another position on the planning board. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Select board updates. Personnel committee tonight before this, but I think you heard the, yeah. the major discussion of that. Yeah. Uh, capital planning meeting tomorrow. Um, we're planning on finalizing and getting out a letter or a memo to the select board um, with basically our findings that we've come up with over the last couple of meetings. Um, that's it for me. Nothing else? Good. Um, biggest, I think, is uh, people are moving into Sanderson Place. Um, lights are on. That's good news. Um, so we'll see what we can do with that. I mean, in, in the, the library, uh, they had talked about that and, and yeah, it's, it's good to see. And I also wanted to comment about how many people I see out walking in Sunderland. Mm -hmm. And uh, along North South Main Street, North Silver Lane, Plum Tree, Silver Lane, Russell, Hadley, Rook. And, and I think part is some of the uh, sidewalks that we put, Garage Road, some of the sidewalks that we put in. Um, it seems like every time I go by, there's someone walking along the river, the river, uh, river view. So I, I just, I mean, the, the hard, I think that some of the hardest, one of the hardest things to do from any committee or board in town is to take, and, and usually it's the planning board, is the, our, the group with a long range view of the town. Um, but we've been except, exceptionally blessed having many committees and boards that have looked at the long term Look at Sanderson Place was what fourteen years, long time from inception to when it finally came through. Um, the river view, the sidewalks, a lot of improvements in town. So I uh, just want to thank a lot of the the people that have given and have have taken a long term view of the town versus just what's what what we're going to do between now and tomorrow. So thank you. Jeffrey? Uh, just give you a quick update. The CPA committee met last week. They got three applications for uh, projects. One is to um, shore up the steeple at the church. Uh, one is to the, for the Sunderland share of um, redoing the tennis courts at Frontier. And the third was pickleball courts at Riverside Park. Um, and it sounded like the first two the committee was supportive of. The third one, I have some work to do to convince them. For, for the tennis courts, is that in addition to the money, the E&D money that they asked for? Or is that? Yes. Okay. How much are they asking for? Uh, for the tennis courts? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think Sunderland's portion is thirteen thousand. How much? No, twenty-three. It, it's a hundred that twenty-three. It's a hundred thousand between the four towns. So ours would be like thirty-one then, or something. I think we're at. Or no, wait. This is this is the four towns off the three towns. I was thinking of the EMS. No, you're right. It's like twenty twenty-six percent or something like that. Yeah. I, I sometimes it's a hard time to expend for me to expend in Deerfield, but 
I understand it's a regional school. I understand that. Okay. But I just I look at use. How many residents from Sunland use? Yep. And and I, I, I guess I'd like to ask could were we missing something on maintenance that would extend the life of those? I think there was a did they did they talk about it at the meeting or was this some some there was a, a discussion about it and that it needs to be totally they, they had been doing maintenance and um, I'll, I'll double check but my understanding was that they had been sealing the cracks and sealing the cracks and it, it had been about 15 years and that's about the expected life span of a tennis court but I will double check and see if there's that was my impression also from the frontier capital planning yeah mm. okay pickleball courts get more use in the tennis court today I still don't know what pickleball is I'm gonna have to YouTube it it's, it's like table tennis it's like, tennis it's like ping pong on on the size of a half of a tennis court Ping pong tennis. The same and thing as tennis. Look, it's like tennis, but it's half the court, and you okay. don't have to move as much. And it's a little rubber ball and smaller paddles. And a stronger paddle. Okay. Fastest growing sport that's out there. <laughs> Went from four people to eight people last year. Huh? <laughs> Went from four people to eight people last year. It was a huge Double. increase. <laughs> I kid for all of our, our viewers who love people ball I'm, I'm kidding no I, I no I, like I said I just I hear about it but I have never seen it never played it never you can put a pickleball court in your backyard and are you going to come over and play pickleball with me sure alright because you could, have, you could have a whole neighborhood there you could have a neighborhood Pickleball tournament. There you go. I'd rather have a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a swimming pool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Motion. I have motion we adjourn. Seconded. And motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by um, saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Three zeros. Uh, 830, Jeff. Right. 829.